Welcome back to the HFC, High Frequency Chaos. We're going to be looking at some more creepy TikToks today. Let's dive down this rabbit hole and break free from the matrix. Let's get it. This is a conspiracy theory. I'm going to admit that straight up. But at this point, I am convinced that the Democratic Party does not want to win the 2024 presidential election. Not because they're losers, but because in some cases, losing is actually winning. Okay, so at this point, they've already canceled primary elections in four states, Tennessee, North Carolina, Massachusetts, and Florida. So not only are they deliberately disenfranchising their voters, but their anointed candidate, Joe Biden, has the lowest approval rating of pretty much any candidate in modern history. It's hard to make a case that this is a winning formula. Now the question is, why wouldn't they wanna win? How does that make any sense? Well, the most important thing that we have to understand is that the Democratic Party is not a public service organization. It is first and foremost, a private corporation. And the job of any corporation, as we know, is to make money. But it's hard for them to make money when they govern because, and this is the huge conundrum for the Democratic Party always, is that part of their party platform, in theory, is supposed to be anti-corporate. Now, don't get me wrong, the Republican Party also only cares about money, but they can do so more honestly because that is their party ethos. Cut taxes, deregulate, become a billionaire. That's the American dream. And if you can't achieve it, it's got nothing to do with systemic injustice. It's 100% your fault. Now, back to the money part. It just so happens that Trump is a fun raging machine for the Democrats. Nobody ever talks about this, but just look at how much money the Democrats raised in 2020 versus 2016, nearly triple, and, and look at Republicans, pretty much the same. And of course, who is about to be president if Joe loses? Hence, Joe Biden for president. Take it or leave it, we don't care. You see, losing, in the case of the Democratic Party, can actually mean winning. The banks are getting scared. They're trying to change the rules so they don't go under. So what are your thoughts? Do you think that what this guy is saying is legit? I think there's some truth there. If we dig deeper down this rabbit hole, you know, politics, you know, left versus right, it never really mattered. All the fact that mattered is that, is, is that they had the masses gather so they could pollute us and brainwash us with all their ideals. While the rich get richer, guess what? We get poorer. The banks are getting scared. They're trying to change the rules so they don't go under. Mm -hmm. And for real, the other day, New York yep. Community Bank woke up like this. Q bank failures 2024. And just a couple of days ago, they tried to pass this new rule about derivatives and the implications are super spicy. So a quick refresher, derivatives, meaning like bets in the stock market that can go completely hog wild, um, are what caused 2008 to collapse. It was one specific type of derivative that they were super hyped on at the time, but derivatives in general allow for banks to just go absolutely fucking ape shit with all kinds of speculation on huge amounts of leverage. So if they're wrong, if things go badly, the whole economy can collapse. And after it almost did, Obama signed this wonderful bill called Dodd-Frank that totally was gonna change everything. He said, quote, Wall Street reform, Dodd-Frank, the laws that we have passed worked. It's popular in the media in political discourse, both on the left and the right, to suggest that the crisis happened and nothing changed. That is not true. Sorry, I should be doing my Obama voice. That is not true. We are moving in the derivative sector, a huge amount of oversight. Fuck that, we don't have time for all that in his voice. Basically, the idea was all these derivatives that are just shady backdoor deals, banks betting with other banks without telling anyone else what they're betting on with huge amounts of money that is not all theirs. A lot of it doesn't even exist because they're banking on leverage. Obama promised that they were all gonna come into the light and be traded on exchanges so we could regulate them and everything would be safe from here on out. And that is why, as of the most recent report, JP Morgan is holding $58 trillion worth of derivatives, closely followed by Goldman Sachs and Citibank. For a little perspective here, I took the GDP of all of the biggest countries in the world and I put them on this cute little chart scaled in trillions of dollars. And if you add up every country except the US, all these ones highlighted in red, then you get that blue bar, $55 trillion. That's all of them except the US added together. 
Remember, gross domestic product. Everything that those countries, the all of these countries combined creates a value in an entire year. And that red bar is JP Morgan alone, how much derivatives they are currently holding open. Just for scale. But Obama told us that don't worry, they're gonna do, it's not gonna be dangerous, they're gonna be all regulated and out in the open market and it's gonna be safe. And that is why as of the most recent reporting last year, 96% of JP Morgan's trades are over the counter, meaning in dark markets where they are not regulated and they are not reported. Only 3% of their derivatives contracts traded on exchanges like the New York Stock Exchange. And this is for every single bank. Some of them are 100% over the counter. This is the exact opposite of what Obama told us they were gonna do with the derivatives market. And shocker, derivatives got so popular into 2000. This is a long video. What happened next? <laughs> Nothing. They stayed really popular. But it's very Because this is the number one way for banks and big rich financial institutions to take our money. And they've already been shown that when they fuck up, they get bailed out. And that brings us to this new regulation that they just tried to get through. And for all you dipshits out there that are always trying to be like, this is notional value. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Yeah, we know what notional value is, guys. Sit tight while we learn about this new rule because notional value matters. I first caught wind of this just a few days ago when this Reddit user, what can I make today, posted and broke this whole bill down. If you Google what you're seeing on the screen here, you can find this post. And yes, I went and corroborated what he's claiming on the official government websites. The law itself is a long document with a whole bunch of legalese that's very confusing. But basically what it's saying is, when the markets are really crazy, how about if we just let the big banks like, kind of, while it's really crazy, let's just not margin call them. See, when the banks or anyone places derivative bets on the market, they have to have a certain amount of collateral just in case <coughs> the trade goes wrong, particularly because all of these trades are being done on margin, meaning money they don't actually have. But sometimes the market does crazy things and gets what we call volatile. And they're worried that that could threaten the stability of its members during periods of heightened volatility. Oh, by the way, its members, referring to the OCC, this is their member directory. We're talking people like Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, Vanguard, Virtue, Instanet, Citigroup, Bank of America, NASDAQ, you get the idea. Not you, you filthy peasant. And they're worried that if the market gets crazy, a sudden extreme increase in market, and this is for every, oh, by the way, it's members referring. Man, that was a long video. I had to pause it. <laughs> uh, we were about halfway in there, but I like this guy. Um, a lot of things that he says is very interesting. You think it was a real shooter? I think it was a real shooter. Mm -hmm. I absolutely think it was a real shooter. If you wanted to stage an attempted assassination, you would never shoot at the person who was the principal, the primary target that you're trying to support, right? So Donald Trump was the principal. If I was trying to stage an assassination to win him popular praise, I would not shoot at him because the risk is too great that the shot would either miss and hit him, possibly hit him fatally, or it would miss him and hit someone in the audience, and then a rally member dies, and now we have to account for why somebody at the rally died. Like, people were killed and people were hurt at the Donald Trump rally in Butler, Pennsylvania. If you wanted to stage an assassination, you would shoot 35, 40 degrees off target, well away from anybody accidentally getting hit, because what's gonna happen? Everybody's gonna hear the gunshots. So the gunshots will still cause the panic the Secret Service would still jump in. They'd still cover him. There'd still be all the same newsworthiness without the risk of killing somebody. And if you really, really wanted to make it like it made headlines, you could even potentially stage some kind of cut that's covered up with a small skin-colored Band-Aid so that when the shots go off, you can wipe off or pull off the Band-Aid and then there's going to be active red spots. You would never actually shoot at the principal. What people don't understand about conspiracies is that when you actually plan to carry out a covert action, you plan to carry out the covert action in the safest possible way. You don't run the risk of actually shooting the principal. His forehead, this is bullshit. That's a mask, that's a skin mask. Man, that's nuts, right? Um, I don't know what to believe. There's so much uh, nonsense out there that this was staged. It was a false flag on this side, on that side. Look. The fact that a former president was almost assassinated. And I know that this is nothing new in the U.S. history. There's been many attempts and there's been 
uh, successful assassinations. But I honestly don't believe that this will be the last time. The powers that be on the left and the right, they already know who they want as their main candidate. And we got still about less than 90 days before, you know, this election. And there's so much going on, so much turmoil. I am so interested to see um, how this is going to turn out. His forehead, this is bullshit. That's a mask, that's a skin mask. It ain't normal, look at it. You can't believe anything you see these days. These glasses aren't even real. Neither is my face. All this stuff was 3D tracked on using these dots that I drew on with this marker. Actually, the marker isn't real either. Neither is the background. Or my face. Have a good night. These guys are central casting. There's nobody in Hollywood that looks like these people. The Darkest Conspiracy Theories, Part 2. The Bohemian... Yeah, I gotta say, um, I've seen a lot of clips of Joe recently. He looks like he's two feet taller. Um, when you get older, you get shorter, not taller. I believe that this guy could be a possible clone or reptilian. Yes, I do believe in reptilians. And this deep fake technology along with AI uh, and these masks. Yes, I believe that the public, we are being deceived by... You know, the powers of be. I keep saying the powers of be because those are the ones that's uh, dividing us and separating us. They give us um, their ideals. They give us their narratives. And then we follow headstrong, both left, right, and in the middle. And we fight each other. We need to stop fighting each other and come together and stand up to the powers of be. Be awoke and awoke in a way that we understand the bullshit that's being fed to us from you know the government i don't want to keep saying powers of be but that's what it is and enough is enough everyone on tiktok knows that the tiktok ban has nothing to do with china it's all about israel been talking to a lot of people involved with the bill on twitter spaces and there's one thing they all have in common they're not on tiktok and if they were they would know that it's not china hashtags that are getting censored it's Israel hashtags. And I accidentally proved this yesterday when I posted this video about how APAC is sponsoring the TikTok ban bill and I hashtagged it with Free Palestine. See, right there, Free Palestine, Free Palestine. And it immediately got throttled and I could tell it was gonna get no views. So I reposted it with no hashtag. And about 12 hours later, no hashtags equals almost half a million views. And Free Palestine hashtags, 23,000 views. And despite the overt censorship of pro-Palestinian content on TikTok, Palestinian support hashtags are the most viewed of all hashtags. And Israel support hashtags are non-existent because we all see what's going on. Because there's two claims the lawmakers are making. They're claiming that China can suppress anti-China content through suppressing hashtags, for example. And they're claiming they can spy on you and get your data. Problem is, I recently made an anti-China video using all the anti-China hashtags. Um, Tiananmen Square, Uyghur Muslims. I talked all about it. I showed footage of Tiananmen Square. Uh, we're at almost 600,000 views. No suppression. Then my homie James Lee, who's a gangster, who you should follow, he charted out how much money all the Congress people are taking from APAC, from Israel lobby money. And it's so much money. And then he plotted it out on a graph to show that the people that are receiving more money, see x-axis is more Israel money, means you're more likely to have voted yes on the bill. And the people that voted no, they all took far less money from Israel lobbies. Oh, and real quick, the claim about them harvesting your data, like you clearly don't understand the nature of cyber warfare today and you should read this book, um, do a little research. China's in all of our shit anyways. They can have all of our data whether you outlaw an app or not. And like. Who the fuck cares? Like, what are they going to do? Force me to buy a knockoff product on Amazon? Like, China's not going to target team, U.S. Man. citizens with our data. Like, like, you're going to send me anti-government propaganda to subvert our American democracy? Like, uh, no need. I'll make that content myself for you.
See, government, the problem is when you uh, have a country where freedom of speech is literally the First Amendment of your constitution, your own citizens are allowed to make anti-government content when you suck ass at your job. And Israel really does not like when we do our freedom of speech thing. And so they have paid everyone off and have come up with a scapegoat for national security to try to take TikTok away before the election. But trust me, everyone sees what's going on. And it's only going to increase the sentiment. It's only going to take more votes away from your guy, Joe. And it's only going to strengthen Palestinian resistance. That's the thing about resistance. The more you oppress, the stronger resistance gets. So anyone that's still telling you that this bill is about China is really uninformed. Obviously not on TikTok. Anyone that's saying the bill is about them being able to ban any app they want is kind of missing the plot. Like, sure, maybe they could, but that's not why they're bringing it now on such a fast timeline. It's because our boy Izzy is in a real pickle and they need to do something quick and before the election. And the gloves are off. Y'all are coming for our free speech. Y'all are coming for our platforms where we talk and we share information. Like, TikTok is not an app for videos of dancing kids. TikTok is an app for journalism. Most of TikTok is talking head videos like this of people sharing information, and that is why it is dangerous to them. If you're not on TikTok, I guarantee you, you have no idea what you're talking about because it is not what you've been told and it is not what you think it is. The reason why they want to ban TikTok is because things like this spread really fast. I'm going to leave you with this clip from the director of the ADL. What we're seeing right now is the product of them putting all their energy towards this problem fast. You think it was a real shooter? I think it was a real shooter. Mm -hmm. I absolutely think it was a real shooter. If you wanted to stay. I mean, that was a lot there. What are your thoughts on that? Do you believe that this TikTok ban is uh, a ploy or a strategic tool that they're using to censor our journalism? or our freedoms of speech? Absolutely. If you don't think so, then, man, you're brainwashed with a lot of the sheeple out there. I do not believe the TikTok ban is, you know, for protecting us. I think it's to keep us more in a bubble, to keep us more in a, in a zeitgeist world where we're locked up and chained up and we don't question anything, but we follow blindly what the powers at B would like. And this would be uh, <clears throat> from the last clips we were watching, you know, these bankers and CEOs, you know, they have control of all the money. And what do they use? And what do they do? They use their power and influence to crush us, the little people. And TikTok, you know, with all these people coming out and bringing, uh, this information for us to see. The governments and the elites don't want that. So we got to keep researching. We have to keep diving down a rabbit hole, keep going as deep as we need to go until we are awakened fully from all this hypocrisy and nonsense that's being fed to us from mainstream media and our governments government conspiracies that actually turned out to be true make sure you check out part one about the heart attack gun in this video we're gonna talk about the dead baby project now this was called project sunshine which is a really messed up name and you'll realize why after i tell the story so the original theory was that the government was stealing dead bodies to do radioactive testing 
And the truth is, the government was stealing parts of dead bodies. But they specifically needed young tissue, so they were stealing from dead babies. These were all recently deceased babies or children and they would take samples of their tissue and sometimes even their limbs. Each of these were collected without permission from grieving families. They did this to over 1500 grieving families. It could be more, we'll just never know. So Marjorie Taylor Greene is still stupid. Now, all right, so this is a creepy one right here. If people are actually doing this, and I believe they are, because I've heard stories like this all the time. They are truly sick, truly demonic, and my sympathy goes out to the families who have lost their children and to these vampires and these demons who are doing this so that they can use these baby parts to have for their rituals. And if you know, if you want to know what I'm saying about rituals, I'm talking about the Wiccan rituals. What do you think about um, the failure of the Secret Service? All right. So I am a big Simpsons fan. I've been watching The Simpsons since I was a kid. I've watched every season. And yes, a lot of these things have come true uh, from The Simpsons. And one could say, you know, it's a coincidence. You know, anyone could predict these type of things. But they have been spot on from, you know... Uh, times, events, subliminal messaging within, you know, the animations. And also, you know, if you go back and look at uh, these clips, and we're going to do one with the Simpsons theories coming, uh, Simpsons theories that have come true on a later uh, podcast, but uh, or reaction video. But yeah, I believe that the Simpsons, uh, it's has some kind of uh, future telling capabilities there. And if not, damn, uh, they've hit the nail on the head every damn time. All right, everybody, uh, that's another uh, one for the books. Welcome to the HFC podcast. And as always, stay blessed, stay safe, and it's dark and crazy times. Join me later this week. We'll throw out another reaction video. Peace. God bless. Later.